What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part three of the Dogs vs. Cats classification competition. Uh, what we're going to be doing now is we've already defined our network. Now we're going to write some extra code, do the do the kind of stuffing of values into the variables of x and y for feeder sets and labels, and then run the network. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, as I'm as I kind of write this, I'm also kind of writing it in terms. I still think in terms of you know writing everything in one big program. So uh, so. The next step in my personal program, because, you know, F5, you're going to rerun everything. Um, at this step, you would, before you actually bother training a network, you would probably want to ask if os.path.exists. Um, and then if, if the meta file already exists for dot .format, the model name, this means you saved a checkpoint. So you've already trained for some number of epics, so you've already got a network you know, the, the weights of that network already trained to some degree. So, you know, that this way you can actually save your progress as you go. So you can model.load um, model name. And then we'll just go ahead and print model loaded if that happens. But um, let's see, this one, this one might actually have, let's do video. Run that cell. Come down here. Cool. So now, um, because most of you hopefully don't have a model already, that would be crazy. For, you're from the future. Uh, now, it, we don't have a model, but that's okay. But at this point, we, we do have our um, training data, which came from here. Right, and recall that's just a big, basically, list, I think. Or wasn't, did we convert? Because this one actually can be a list. Right, it's just this, this training data is a list. Uh, one of the elements, actually both of the elements inside that list is, are NumPy arrays, but anyway, continuing on. Uh, what we wanna do is, is, is separate this out into training and testing data for the accuracy of our model. So we're gonna say train equals, and we'll just say train data. And you know, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna say 500. So basically what this means is the training data will be all but the last 500 sample data. And then we're gonna say the uh, test data is the train data minus 500 onward. Um, and this will, be in, this will be out of sample for our model in terms of testing purposes for accuracy and all that. Uh, but this is labeled, labeled data. So this isn't what we're necessarily competing with, but in theory, we should get the same accuracy on this data as we should get on the actual training or the, the actual testing data from uh, Kaggle. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is actually separate this stuff out, reshape it, get it ready for our, uh, for TF Learn. So we've got X needs to be something, and then we've also got Y. X will be our feature sets, Y are our labels. So what do we want um, X to be? It's going to be the NumPy array. I like to just keep converting things to NumPy arrays just because it must be a NumPy array. So this might be a little redundant, but that's all right. <clears throat> We're going to say I, the zeroth element for I in train. Okay. So um, basically train recall consists of the data and the labels um, itself. So X and Y, I zero, the zeroth element was the image data. So this is the image data, pixel data. And then outside of that array, we also want to dot reshape negative one image size by image size by one. All right. Now Y will just be, um, this one is acceptable to just be I, if I can type, I1 for I in test. Okay, now we're gonna have test X and test Y. For this, I'm gonna copy this, come down here, paste, call this test X, call this test Y, all lowercase this time, rather than train, it's test, copy, did I really? This needs to, let's see, um, what have I done? This needs to be train, not test, what was I thinking? All right, let me make sure I didn't make any other mistakes there. <laughs> yeah, that's the training Y data. That This is what's getting fit. This is for testing accuracy. This must not be, do not make that mistake. 
Uh, you'll get an error if you did, but anyway, that would be annoying. All the TensorFlow errors are like, you know, 22 pages of just disgusting error. So it just, it stinks every time you hit one. Um, I think that's good. That looks about right in my eyes. We'll know. We'll, we'll see the, you know, the novel of error. There it is. Uh, did we not close? What did we? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So now let's go ahead and train the network. So I had it copied, but I don't anymore. I'm going to just recopy. So I'm going to take this line, just that model.fit, just so we don't have to type all this stuff out. Paste. Uh, input x, y, that's all fine. Let's just do three epics. We don't need to do that many. Uh, test x, test y, that's actually the same, so that's fine. Show metric, yes, please. Um, snapshot step, we could probably go less than five, or greater than 500, but I'll just leave that for now. MNIST, uh, that's not what it should be called. We're going to call the run ID um, whatever the model name is. So run ID is what we're, how we're going to find it in um, TensorBoard. Okay, so let's go ahead. And in fact, because we're going to use TensorBoard, let's go ahead and do five epics. Um, just so I can show you TensorBoard. Let's go. Hopefully no errors. Looks good so far. And we're off. Okay, so... Um, first epic, we can see loss here. Loss didn't appear to really do much. We'll, we'll continue waiting here. Um, also, we can see accuracy over here. Doesn't appear to be doing much. In fact, lo ooh, loss, is, loss is going up. <laughs> there we go. Maybe a little better. Um, all right. So uh, now the next thing that I want to show you fine individuals is um, tensor board. So uh, while we wait, I think what I'll do, because I want to show you TensorBoard once this is kind of done. So um, so I'm going to, oh, we only did, I, meant, I thought I was going to have us do more epic, epics. Oh, well, um, fine. So the TensorBoard, um, in fact, actually, I'm still going to pause so I can make sure I get the right TensorBoard link. It's like TensorBoard dash dash tensor dir, and then you got to do like you know, give a name. Um, anyway, let me pause for just a second. Okay, so um, so this will be like the command that you'll run. Let me make sure we get space. So I'm gonna paste. Uh, if you're on um, if you're on Linux, I'm pretty sure you just either I'm not even sure you need the log. I think you do need the log dir flag, but um, generally by default, tf learn will just do I think slash tmp logs or logs i don't know i can't remember which but anyway if you specified log like i did you should be able to um locally if you run tensorboard locally i think you can get away with the local but on windows for sure you'll want to give the full path uh to it so it just depends on on where you are but you can never go wrong with a full path so if you're having problems on some other uh, operating system give the full path the other thing you need on Windows is to give it this little name, right? You can go with foo or whatever the heck you want to go with. I'm going to keep it foo, but it doesn't matter. But on, like, Linux, you, you just, just just give the full path. Um, but for some reason, Windows really wants the foo, so, or the name. But anyway, copy that. Um, and then let me just open up a... I should just hold... There we go. Shift, command.exe, paste that in, run it. Um, and then it tells you TensorBoard's running at uh, your local address, port 6006. Um, so I'll just uh, copy that. Or can we click it? Nope, can't click it. <laughs> and then once you get here, um, basically we can, for now, uh, I forget what its default is. I think it defaults to like zero. You can record a lot of uh, variables and stuff as you go. Um, but for now, we're just we're just doing the basic stuff. Um, so we can see here over our, our short time of training, we basically, this was our accuracy. We pretty much did nothing but maybe even go down slightly. Like we can add a lot of smoothing here. And I mean, we basically stay like 50%. So not very good. <laughs> accuracy validation, yeah. Okay, so we can see that. We can see our um, atom compared to loss and raw. No good, no good there. Loss, we want to really see loss going down. Instead, it kind of started going up almost, which is kind of weird. Um, so nothing good. Nothing good happened. <laughs> so now I want to show you guys um, the power of neural nets and why neural nets are such a big deal 
lately within the last few years because neural networks have been around for a very long time. A lot of the concepts for neural networks have been around for a very long time. But what gives a neural network power? Well, it's just the size. So let's keep, I'm going to keep the image 50. The learning rate, arguably a l larger learning rate takes longer to train. So think of it this way, a really small learning rate um, or a large learning rate, let's say. I, I think of small in terms of, you know, the actual number that we use here, but actually the smaller this number, the larger the learning rate. Um, so a super small learning rate is, it's not going to, like a, a let's, let's start with a large learning rate. A large learning rate is more likely to, to miss, miss the best um, objective. A super small learning rate is either gonna fi can find itself in a local maximum or minimum or whatever, or um, it can just take a really long time. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, one e negative three. That's that's fine-ish. Probably um, some networks could go all the way up to five, but we should be fine. I'm gonna leave the image size and learning rate the same. Um, what I am gonna change is the number of layers. Let's do let's do six convolution layers. Now, just for the record, one convolution layer could should be able to classify a linear problem, two neural network layers, and in fact, we've almost we've really got three net neural net layers. We've got two convolution, one fully connected. So this is actually a three layer neural net. One layer is for linear problems, two layer nonlinear problems. Add more from there, it's they're still all nonlinear, um, and this was capable of um, correctly classifying like 99% of handwritten digits at a resolution of 28 by 28. So the question is, um, what happens when we just, let's just copy this, and I'm gonna paste and paste. Um, and we, we can leave it as is actually. Um, cool, so all we've done is now added, we're six, six conv layers, um, and just, just kind of arbitrary. <laughs> so I'm gonna save that. Um, and then actually, let's see, I think the other thing I need to do is we need to reset the graph. So let me actually pull up, um, cause it's like, uh, I think we'll have to bring in TensorFlow. Yeah. So actually probably what I'm going to do. I'm trying to think where I could put push this in. We could just push it in right here. So what I'm going to do is uh, import TensorFlow as TF, and then TF dot reset underscore default underscore graph. I could also reset the kernel. That would work, I think. But we'll just reset the default graph. Basically, what ha what happens is there's still a graph kind of because this is this. Um, notebook is still operating so that and that graph is still kind of happening so uh, we need to reset it so I'm gonna go ahead and reset that hopefully that'll run looks like it did great um, hopefully we don't have that model still because we shouldn't uh, train test cool fit hopefully we don't get an error if we do I'll restart the kernel but okay so already we can see um, we are definitely we at least made some gains um, through and then the next epic made some more gains. Epic five is or uh, two, sorry, made us some slight gains. Also, we can come into TensorBoard. Hopefully, we can just refresh TensorBoard. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. No, I don't see the other one just yet. Let's see. Did we? Um, I don't think I did anything wrong there. Hold on. Let me see here. I might need to just restart it. I'm just gonna restart TensorBoard. It should have already been there. Because uh, they should both be in the logs. Oh, it's not there. Let me see if it went to the logs. Oh, it's also not logged. Are we overwriting this one? Oh, man. Didn't I change the name? Did I not save the changed name? I must not have saved the change. No, I did. I don't know why we're seeing this. Oh, we cut... Oh... Model name, where did we save what the model name was going to be? Right down here, right? No. Not there. Where is it? No, oh, fit, right? Yeah, why? Why are you doing me like this? <laughs> okay. 
Well, you know what? Um, oh, I hate to do this. Well, you should get the idea. This is this got kind of messy. Um, man, I'm kind of bummed. I don't want to show this because this isn't quite right. Because it's like distorting everything. Let me. Uh, I'm just gonna restart everything and then I'll pause, restart, and run all. Um, because it's gonna have to. Tr it's gonna process all. This. Oh, we should have just loaded. If I would have just done con. Anyway, I'm gonna pause. <laughs> All right, it's training again. Um, I've got plenty of things to say, and it'll, it'll be done before I'm done yakking. So, um, yeah. So what I what I had did is just so this doesn't happen again. Um, we can just load the the file that we saved. So now, if we restart the kernel, it should go much quicker. Uh, anyway, uh, our training is going pretty well. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. We ended with 80% accuracy, only five epics. And again, all we did was add more layers. We just copy and pasted some more layers, and that's it. So. Um, now coming over to tensor board, I'm still not, it should, there it is, beautiful, beautiful, it's too bad, the other one's there, because then we could have compared them and been like, hey, look, you know, here's an example, but as you can see, it's got the other one there, but anyway, um, this looks much better, accuracy's rising over time, it does seem to fall off there, but I wager if we kept going, it'd probably go up, uh, so yeah, we got that, um, Adam uh, lost to Roz, going down as it should, and then finally lost, hopefully going down. Sure enough, good. So these are good looking metrics. We could probably keep going. Basically once loss kind of flattens out, or if loss gets to zero, but if loss gets to zero, chances are you overfit, uh, but eventually it'll kind of level off. Same thing with accuracy, eventually it'll level off. If it gets to a perfect 1.0, you'll overfit. So, um, okay, so size matters. Now, uh, the last thing I'm going to do before I, we leave and go to the next one is, you know, you might be happy with this. So, if, like, for example, if you're happy with this, you could say um, model.save model name. Don't worry about this. This The model saved. So then later what you, you can say instead is uh, you can do a model.load, which we've already got up here. So we could do this. Model loaded. Okay, so now we could we could retrain this. So that model's been loaded, for example. Let's run it for another five epics. So actually, we should be able to just come down here. We might need to do that. This is probably going to give us an error, but let's see. Nope, it still is going. Fascinating. If that gives you an error, either restart the kernel or do the, um, the TensorFlow reset that we did. Somewhere around here. Here it is. <laughs> These lines. Eventually, it's going to give you an error. Anyway. Um, so as we can see, accuracy is actually kind of kind of improving. We, we're seeming to probably level out here around the low 80s, but we'll, we'll see how it does as we as we continue here. Also, notice how it, actually in this case it it actually knows what epic we're we're actually adding epics. That's pretty interesting. I don't think I've noticed that that it does that. I wonder what I did special this time for it to know what epic we were on. Usually, it'll restart the epics. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Okay, so we can see the new updated data. We still haven't really leveled out. We could probably keep going and keep making improvements. But instead, um, what I want to do now is in the next video, uh, show you all what we can do. How do we actually, okay, we've got the model. How do we use it? And then also submit data to, um, to Kaggle. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.